for a zero RB team, I'm pretty happy to have T.J. Hilton and Lamar Miller. Actually, I was I was actually really considering taking Eifert right there uh, because I'm worried that some people are looking at uh, at their rankings, you know, like uh, the fake football. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but it's so weird to me that he's that he's all the way down at number 200. He is our number nine uh, staff ranks tight end. And oh, I'm the lowest on him at 14th. Uh, I, I do think, again, that that's more an indictment of the Bengals offense than it is Tyler Eifert. I think he's a, a solid player. I'm just not sure how many points they're going to score as an offense. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that, it makes sense with Andy Dalton. Uh, what's good with uh, crappy quarterbacks is usually uh, crappy quarterbacks are synonymous with uh, decent scoring tight ends because <laughs> <laughs> they can't throw more than 10 yards. So um, I actually like uh, Cincinnati a lot this year, which is funny because, um, yeah, I know it's funny that you say you hate them because I actually bet them to win the Super Bowl. They, they're at 33 Get out to of 1. Here. They're not going to yeah, win I'm the not Super e- Bowl. I'm not even joking. I bet 20 bucks on it at, at 33 to 1. I think their defense is much improved. And I don't. I think Jeremy Hill's gonna light it up. I think Hill's gonna get about fifteen hundred yards and about fifteen touchdowns. I do. I do love Hill, but running the ball is not the key to Super Bowl success anymore. Like that. That's just not how teams win the Super Bowl. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that. But uh, because they have a legit running game and a legit, well, they have AJ Green and hopefully Tyler Eifert will actually do well. I actually think the defense will be the heart and soul of their team. I mean, they have Geno Atkins is coming back. And the, the defense is really good, and, and uh, Marvin Lewis is a defensive-minded uh, head coach. So, and he's on the hot seat. Really, every year really the whole is. on the hot seat. So Lewis is going to get fired if they don't get past the first round. I, I think uh, Cincinnati will probably at least get to the uh, second round of the playoffs or maybe even the AFC Championship game. And what I'm going to do, if they do get to the AFC Championship game, go up against New England or, Just or uh, Indy. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, I would hedge and bet the other team. Yeah, because I, I would suddenly not like my bet as much. Yeah. <laughs> so so. You're, you're a pick away from coming up here. What are you thinking about with your roster? Because you still need to fill your tight end spot. Otherwise, it's just it's bench players. I do. Yeah, I have um, – Decent. Uh, I have two backup running backs, um, and I have four um, receivers. So I have actually I want to yeah four receivers and four running backs. So I'm feeling okay with that, and I think there's a lot of good value, uh, flex value later on. So I'm just gonna take Eifert because I'm just surprised that nobody's taken him already. <laughs> yeah, man, it seems like a flag. little bit of a reach on Eifert, but I think uh, at pick 113 overall in round 10 in a 12 team league, I think uh, it's good value. Because I, I think Eifert's going to be a top five guy. Or it's it's really not a reach at this point because all these tight ends are of similar value. Like the only other guys I think you could argue for at this point are Rudolph or Delaney Walker or yeah. maybe Safarian Jenkins if you're really buying into his hype train. But and I do, I do, I, I do too. But but the thing is, is you might as well take the guy that you like the most when it comes down to a decision like that. Um, with that said, I'm back on the clock here. Uh, Tannehill fell back to me. I'm going to take him now. Uh, nice. making my QB one, I might, I mean, I might regret this. It's possible I could, you know, wait two more rounds and take Bradford and then, you know, stream him with some other guy. But I do think that the Dolphins offense has potential to be just very good this year. And I don't mind, uh, you know, taking a shot on that, uh, trying to find, again, trying to find a player who's going to do what Roethlisberger did last year, uh, you know, elevate themselves from like, uh, a general starter to uh like a, an every week starter yeah no i agree um Tannehill is uh, somebody that's actually his, his stats have improved every single year of his career and i think he's in his fifth year now mm-hmm. so uh and it's, it's a little bit of a continue uh continuality with the the offense with lasers coming back and uh i think the the receivers have really improved with cameron and uh you know and uh Jones, I mean, uh, Landry Jones. What's the name? Is that Jarvis name? Landry. Jarvis Jones, yeah. I was watching the damn game yesterday, and Landry Jones was sucking the entire time. So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, Jarvis Jones is looking really good. So, uh, I don't know. I like uh, Tannehill a lot. I uh, He was clearly the best uh, quarterback on, on the board. Yeah, I, I mean, he's definitely my highest-ranked guy at that point. Uh, with that said, I do think there's just as much value to be had, like a round or two from now, with a guy like Bradford or even Cutler or Kaepernick like the, these guys are going to put up points it's not going to be on a week-to-week basis uh those guys are going to outscore Tannehill often enough uh and be close enough the rest of the time to where you can definitely uh get more value out of these middle round picks uh taking you know more depth and more lottery tickets for your style of uh you know just trying to hit on a guy who busts out um 
with that yeah. said right now in the draft there's there's so much uncertainty uh like no one knows exactly which of these guys are going to break out we have we have our feelings we have the you know the stories we read and the, and the narratives we buy into that back up our feelings on certain players but in general this feels like the time in the draft when you really want to get safe floor guys because there will yeah. still be those high upside high risk players later uh you know three or four rounds from now yeah i agree with you there so with that in mind I, i'm currently looking at uh anquan bolden who i saw somewhere in the rankings maybe he just got selected no he's still, he's still there. there at 129 you and i were talking before we started recording about how we feel that the niners offense is been a little unfairly uh judged in in the light of the fantasy gods like people just think yeah. that this this offense is going to completely crater fall off a cliff and you know never produce anything worthwhile again and yeah come on that just they're going to be worse especially on defense but wouldn't that only mean more passing i mean is it, it, who's going to catch the ball from kaepernick besides bolden uh tory smith and vernon davis like these guys are going to put up right. numbers. They might not be consistent. Uh, it might be match dependent, but there are going to be weeks where you're going to want to be starting those guys. Definitely, uh, Bolden's one of the like more, one of the more unsexy uh, wide receiver twos. But I mean, you're legitimately getting a wide receiver two, or at worst, probably a wide, wide receiver three. Some of the really high floor. I mean, he's had what over 1,100 yards in the last two or three years, and uh, yeah, and the Niners are going to be getting, uh, they won't be giving up 10 points a game like they used to. I mean. So they're going to have to play um, catch-up. And, uh, yeah, Bolton's really solid. So that's what I'm going to take here. Uh, there are a few other players that are kind of on that level, uh, guys that have, have been in the league for a little while who I feel like are, you know, steady producers who, like, there's nothing really wrong with them. They're just not exciting picks. Uh, and, and I think there are a lot of them this year, Steve Smith, Bolden, uh, Michael Crabtree, uh, even Pierre Garçon, like, these guys are going to be fine. There's no need to avoid them like the plague, you know, just because right. they're not 24 anymore, you know? Exactly. They're going to give you a high floor. And a lot of these guys will actually give you a high upside, too. Like, look, Brandon Lloyd that one year was the, the number one wide receiver overall. Oh, don't remind you know? me. <laughs> that was so, – uh, I, I don't gamble on sports, especially, you know, prop bets very often. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that bet. Yeah, yeah that year was the one year I picked uh, – I made a bet and I invested heavily in Roddy White to win the receiving oh, title. No. He lost by like 50 yards to Brandon fucking Lloyd of all yeah. people. Like, I think, I don't think Brandon Lloyd was on the board. He was like, he was the field in the preseason, which typically with those sorts of bets, how often does the field win on like, you know, rushing, receiving, passing leaders? Like, that can't happen very often, can it? Very rarely. Very yeah. rarely. Yeah, because they usually put up like 30 or 40 or, or, uh, wideouts and they're all the top, you know, the main guys. Yeah, that's very rare. I'm sure the field was probably around 50 to 1 or 40 yeah. to 1 or something like that. So, it would have been a great bet that year. But yeah, that's probably the only time the field's won in the past <laughs> 20 years, honestly. That'd be interesting <laughs> to look up. I should, I should check that out because that would just make yeah. my bad beat even worse. I know, right? Maybe like Michael Jackson in like 1994. <laughs> 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 that was random, too. All right. <laughs> every, every year it's either. All right. Oh, it's my turn. All right. Well, um, uh, let's see. All right. Well, with you saying high uh, high floor veterans, I might go the other way and go high upside guy. <laughs> hey, that's um, different I'm strokes, seeing, Jeff. Different well, why the hell not? Try to have a different draft. Um, I like Reggie Bush here. Uh, he's not really a high, high upside Reggie Bush. High upside. Oh, he's <laughs> always a high upside man. <laughs> All right. Well, with high upside, uh, kind of a lottery ticket in that thing. I'm gonna go with Cody Latimer. Cody Latimer is going to be the uh, starting wide receiver on, in three wide receiver sets with uh, with Emmanuel um, Sanders uh, moving on to the slot. And um, with no Welker and with no Julius Thomas, I actually think that there's he's going to get a lot of targets this year. He's a 6'4 guy, and uh, you know defenses are going to be uh, double-teaming uh, Demarius Thomas. And I forgot that I had Demarius Thomas, so it was slight, a little bit of a handcuff pick for me unintentionally. So, but um, if Tom, if Demarius or Emmanuel Sanders go down, I think uh, Cody Latimer is like a shoe in to be a, a wide receiver too. He's a lot like uh, Devontae Adams in in uh, Green Bay. He's in, uh, he's in just a uh, explosive offense with an elite quarterback, and he's young. And they're gonna start eventually down the road, and uh, they're high pick uh, guys that. Uh, we're part of that rookie class last year. So 
What what is your general philosophy on handcuff picks, whether it be running backs or wide receivers? Is it different between the two positions? I mean, I understand that the the wide receiver handcuff isn't really a thing that people talk about, but but it does kind of exist in the context that you just described with Latimer and uh, Demarius. Like if Demarius gets hurt, Latimer is going to see a lot more targets and that could pay off for you. It's a nice insurance plan. But right. in general, what are your thoughts on handcuffing? Do you like to do it? Do you, do you think it's stupid like I do or, or what? Yeah. I like uh, handcuffing if the uh, bench spots are deep. If we're uh, like in a 20 to 25 round draft, I will handcuff. Um, there are some handcuffs where you have to take, like someone like Niall Davis or Ryan Matthews this year. I think uh, these guys, I like the handcuffs that will also give you standalone value if you're in a pinch. Matthews, you know he's going to still get 10, 10 carries a game. So will Niall Davis. And these guys have uh, legit uh, running back one upside if their starters go down. And uh, I do like uh, like like uh, starters that are a little bit older, like um, DeMarco Murray with all those uh, rushes he had last year or Jamal Charles. I mean, these guys are a little bit higher injury prone than, than other running backs. So so I do I will take them. It depends on the situation. Uh, they'll have to have really high ceilings if – all the cards, you know, if uh, if the the starter it gets hurt. All right. Um, what do I need? All right, I have. I'm up. I have a whole bunch of receivers. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna look down the list. Got Reggie Bush still. Yeah, at Darren this, Sproles. At this point, you can really start to dig deep in the rankings, right? Right. Yeah, you can definitely. Uh, I was talking about this guy before. I'm gonna go with James White is because I think he's going to win that third down running back job right away. And if Blunt gets gets arrested again and gets cut or gets, or fumbles, uh, James White could be a three down running back. And he's one of those guys, one of those lottery picks that could uh, win me this league if all goes right. So, um, yeah, sure. James White. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you, you've done it. There's no going back now. Yeah, no. <laughs> And uh, after pick 130 or so, it's all upside to me because uh, either I'm going to cut these guys and take the hot free agent or uh, these guys will blow up. And uh, I don't know. I, I usually like taking like the youngest team. You know how like Yahoo will give you like a draft report? And most of the times my teams will say uh, it will say uh, like you have the youngest team pretty much. <laughs> 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 it says something like that. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I want to do with this next pick. Uh, kind of in a no man's land of of three bench spots left. Uh, I have you know a couple solid what I believe to be backup wide receivers and backup running backs. Uh, you know you can sprinkle in when the matchups are good, but I definitely want to go upside at this point. Uh, there, there's no point in taking another Anquan Bolden type of player, um, even though I do like, uh, like I said, like Peter Garcon is is a guy I would consider. Uh, although I think he might be gone. Uh, the guy I'm going to take is Nick Toon uh, from the Saints. Nice. And I've ended up with Toon this guy down. in a lot of mock drafts so far, if only because what you were talking about with Cooks earlier applies to basically everyone who could catch a pass in New Orleans is where are those targets going to go that we're going to Stills and to Jimmy Graham? And I, I don't know if Nick Toon is that guy, but at, at this point in the draft, like I might as well you know make the pick and, and see if see if he does. Yeah, I think he's a great pick. I mean, he could uh, give you Kenny Stills type of numbers of a couple years ago when Stills was actually relevant. And Toon, I think he's like 6'4 with like 4'4", 40. So he's got the size-speed combo. And it, all he has to do is earn Drew Brees' uh, trust. And uh, he could really bust out. And it seems like Colston should break down any day now. right? I mean, he's one of those old, unsexy wide receivers that probably will uh, return good value. Yep. But someone like Toon has a li- – I mean – Tune opposite of, of uh, Cook seems like it, it's like a perfect compl- uh, complimentary to each other. Perfect complement to each other. Yeah, I, I think in general, I, I don't mind owning Nick Tune and CJ Spiller because I have a feeling one of those guys is going to soak up so many of those targets to become startable that even if the other one doesn't pan out, I, I can just cut that other guy. Um, right. W- with that said, I think in general, I, I would probably have stills rated a little bit higher than Tune. But because I had already drafted Tannehill and Jordan Cameron, uh, I'm not a big fan of taking another uh, Miami Dolphins, you know, passing offense person in that spot. Right. Makes sense. Uh, Yeah, I don't like to overcommit to any one offense because that can really turn your draft into a train wreck. 